Okay, welcome back to the scene of Saw 5, um, also known as my dad's workshop. Um, I wanted to show you a few things. We have some additions to the circuit collection this week. To go with the Colpitz oscillator that we made last week, if you remember, if you didn't see that video, there's a link uh, right up here probably to get to that video. Um, so in addition to that circuit, we have a Class A amplifier, just a single transistor, a couple resistors, a capacitor, a couple capacitors, and a also a zero, zero cross voltage detector that is made out of this tiny little comparator that I'll show a video to or a uh, little time lapse to in a minute. But um, the inspiration behind these circuits is this new toy. Santa Claus brought a nice, uh, nice Chinese signal generator and signal uh, frequency counter for Christmas. So um, thought we'd have some fun with that and try to use instead of, uh, if you remember from also that last video, this frequency counter up here, uh, which we were counting the frequency of the Colpitz oscillator on. Instead of using that, now we're going to use my own. Uh, Santa Claus didn't want me using his anymore. <laughs> so now I've got my own. Output voltage is about mm, just under 300 millivolts peak to peak, which is not enough to trigger. Uh, I'm not really sure. I have to do more reading, but the circuitry in this in the frequency counter here um, is not sensitive enough to detect that that voltage peak to peak. It uh, doesn't trigger. It triggers at something higher. And so in order to get this frequency counter to work with this circuit, we actually have to amplify the signal coming out of this guy. And so that's the, the main uh, inspiration for this video. So we'll go over, so right now F is zero hertz. That's good because we have no input. And so to external end, we're gonna take our, what's, what's now mm, about 500 uh, millivolts peak to peak, half a volt peak to peak. We're gonna put it in here. Lo and behold, zero hertz. Wah, that sucks. Okay, so yeah, again, that is the circuitry in in this uh, counter is not has some sort of trigger level, or at least that's what I hypothesize has some sort of trigger level that the wave that I'm putting into it has to pass in order for it to register. As it's not reading any of our um, any of our peaks right now, our wave peaks, and so we have zero hertz as a result. To fix that, we have a Class A operational amplifier, single transistor. Uh, put the um, link to the uh, circuit diagram down in the description and probably do an actual discussion of how the circuit works in the uh, in future videos but basically it's just a common emitter amplifier and um, I biased it such that it's operating in its quiescent point so it's there's a constant current actually flowing through the transistor and uh, we're act we're using it in what's called its linear region um, so that it amplify the signal that it gets on the base linearly uh, and that's what gives us our amplification is that that linear that linear gain is what we're looking for so more on that later but for now let's see the operation let's see this thing in action This is uh, the amp circuit that is taking input from the oscillator and supposed to be amplifying it. Um, <laughs> there's a couple caveats to that. One is, as you can see on the screen here, there is quite a bit of, we'll say, artifacts <laughs> in the signal. Um, we've got, so first thing I'll say is, so those are the same uh, scale right now, we'll, we'll change but yeah, we'll change channel to scale. Okay, so now this is on, this signal is twice as big as it looks in this picture. But anyway, the point of showing you this is, as you can see, the amplifier is inverting. So as we go, as we get a peak on our input signal, the yellow is our input signal, we get a low on our output signal. Um, and that's because in common emitter configuration, you get inverting amplification. It's a learning process, and as you can see, this is not pretty. Anyway, we have 800 millivolts peak to peak on the uh, input signal to get this uh, output voltage up to two volts uh, peak to peak. You probably can't see it down there, but um, so the point of that again is, as you can see on the frequency counter, if I put our input signal, 
how to put our input signal in. Of course, that's going to go crazy now. Wait, why? Actually, this shouldn't. I, I have to trigger on the blue down there. Don't pay attention to that. <laughs> As you can see on the input, we are still not reading any. There, we have not reached the threshold for triggering on the input circuitry for this uh, signal generator or signal generator and frequency counter. And so as a result, we get zero hertz. But if we try the amplified signal, which remember is two volts peak to peak. And it does, sure enough, go to 7.9 and some change. If you remember from the previous video, um, this is down a little bit from eight megahertz because we put some mass uh, in the form of Sharpie marker, um, Sharpie ink, we put some mass on top of that quartz crystal. So um, yeah, there you go. That's triggering. So that's really cool. That's, that's good news. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is we'll get the other frequency counter dialed up here. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you the comparison of these two, um, of the old versus new frequency counter. 7965680. And seven nine six five seventy two, so it's off by we'll say eighty megahertz or so. So that's discrepancy due to probably in part due to this cheap guy, but also these frequency counters are running off their own internal clocks that basically say, okay, well, what is a nanosecond? Um, and so those clocks define basically what time is as we perceive it, and that's how they get actual values for frequency and period and such. So they might be, well, they, they are running on two slightly different clocks, slightly different time bases, so there is going to be some discrepancy in the reading that they get. Um, anyway, one thing I did want to show is just kind of cool, is this frequency counter we have here in the shop goes triggers super low. And I'm going to bring this all the way down. So on the power supply, we are at 2 volts and you probably can't see it down here, but this uh, signal is going all the way down to the oscillation quits at around two volts input and around 100, I'm sorry, in around 50 millivolts peak to peak. So 50 millivolts peak to peak is how uh, um, low of an amplitude we get and like our lowest possible input for oscillation, our lowest possible supply voltage. So my question was, can the frequency counter we have read that? The answer is yes, it's triggering is that good. So that's 50 millivolts right there, and this thing is able to detect that. So it does not have the limitations of the one that I got for Christmas um, in that um, the triggering is not based on the amplitude of the input wave, but rather the hypothesis is that this guy is actually working off of zero cross detection, zero voltage uh, crossing. And what that is, is as the waveform crosses zero, um, there's circuitry built into this frequency counter that can detect when that happens. And that's what it bases its timing off of. And so now I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna now show you a zero crossing circuit that I made um, that does basically the job that I think this guy is doing. All right, as you can see here, uh, I've swapped out the... Where did, so here was the IC from hell. <laughs> as you can see right here, that is the IC that I was soldering in that video. And I can't quite get the response I want out of this chip. So uh, here is the new IC. It's an LM3 N, LM318N, and it's in the uh, zero voltage, um, zero voltage crossing de crossing detector configuration that I've, I'll show you in the that's in the um, link below. Um, it's just basically positive um, positive terminal of the op amp goes to ground and negative goes to uh, the signal. So anyway, um, what we have here on screen, 
this is the this is what we want, which is good. This is the uh, crossing detection that we were looking for. We have the waveform crosses zero. So th these are um, we're reading the signal of the wave in is the blue, and the wave out the output is the yellow line. And they're both these are both AC coupled signals. We're looking at both one volt piece, and this is for a 50 or a 10 kilohertz wave. And so as you can see, the crossing is uh it's pretty there's pretty good detection here we have the cross and the oh, let's see if we can zoom in so the cross of the input and outputs are basically spot on in fact they are very very close to spot on let me see if we can yeah so that's fine the problem and i don't know i i this is the first time i've done this i don't know if it's supposed to be better than this but as you can see the this is the cross, this is the intersection of the input over here, and this is where we're detecting it on this side. So I'm not sure uh -oh, why that is. But anyway, so we're getting good detection on, I guess you could call this, this is the falling edge of our output as we flip from negative to positive on the input signal. So for, what's that, for what that's worth. Now, the other thing I want to note is <laughs> there's going to be lots of reworking to do with this. And I might have to do it with transistors. I'm not sure what the fastest way to do this circuit is because, as you can see, we're going to increase in frequency 20 kilohertz, 30, 40, 50, 60. And you can see we are no longer detecting the exact cross. Um, so there are some speed limitations, and you, there's obviously there's distortion as we get up past. Uh, Let's see here. So there's just, this is like not even usable really. There's distortion. We're up at uh, a third of a gigahertz. I'm sorry, a third of a, meg a megahertz right now. Anyway, so for whatever reason, this circuit is not good for, honestly, I wouldn't even take it really above 20 or 30 kilohertz. Um, and that's being pretty conservative. Or that's, that's being pretty um, non-conservative rather. Here's here's 10, 20, 30, 40. So yeah, I, I don't know if you can even use that for perfect detection. Anyway, that's zero voltage detection. Um, the reason we would want to do that is it would eliminate the need to have an amplifier on our oscillator. So we could just do, we could just zero voltage detect and presumably get down to pretty low. We could, we could probably send the three, 300 millivolts um, output straight into the external in um, after we put it through the zero voltage crossing, which will give us uh, the peak to peak here is uh, oh I took it off yeah peak to peak is three volts here on the on the output. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot more. I'm gonna show you some software I wrote to um, exploit some of the cool features this has in terms of uh, using it with serial communication. Just just a, like a dumb little script to plot the data plot the frequency data from this guy into um, you know onto a computer monitor so the end goal of this is to be plotting the live data of our um, crystal monitor our piezo crystal monitor in the previous video to be plotting that with this on in real time on the um, on some computer screen and uh, presumably to do something with that data um, other than store it so yeah we'll see you next time